Hey everyone, welcome to Founders Live Conversations, where we tell unique and inspiring stories of entrepreneurship from all over the world. I am Nick Hughes, I'm the founder and CEO of Founders Live, and I'm so excited today to have Asan Saleh from Zestify in Los Angeles, and he is our finalist from North America to be a part of Founders Life Fest 2021. Asan, welcome to the conversation. Ooh, exciting. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, my name is Asan. I'm the founder and CEO of Zestify. Excited to be here and having a chat. Um, yeah. This is great. This is great. And, you know, um, we're definitely going to jump in a little, little more to Zestify, what you're building and all that. But first, I want to uh, really just congratulate you again on um, you know just all your success this year you've been through uh, a few founders live events and you've won the los angeles event that we had earlier this year you then qualified for so i think that's one thing to also say is like there's a qualification to even get into the prime time events which then you qualified for and went through you know founders live prime time and pitched at our north america event and um, successful in that. Your pitch, man, is just awesome. So, you know, congratulations. And how has the year been just even in, in all that together? Wow. The year has been, I'd say the one word, learning. It's been learning about everything, learning about, you know, what we see, what we've seen here, uh, pitching, but uh, the bread and butter stuff when it comes to startup life. Um, in my case, it's getting from the crowdfund idea stage to now building and wrapping up the prototype. And hopefully I'm uh, hoping to launch that just in time for Founders Live Fest. That'll be exciting to be able to promote it. Yeah, learning. Yeah, no, it's absolutely the, the word is learning. And, you know, I was gonna save this till last, but hey, let's, let's just even go. Um, what have you learned you know, what have you learned this year? When you say learning has been, um, you know, really the word of maybe 2021, just mm -hmm. dive into that a little more. What have you learned? Uh oh. All right. Yeah. You asked for it. I'd say learning how to eat well. Uh, no, no, joking aside. Yeah. Maintaining my health um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Because, um, yeah, it's still one person team, just me. But I've been able to learn besides that on how to make sure to carve time for myself and then being able to find those moments where I can grab inspiration and then uh, morph that into perhaps like a product feature or uh, something to design in the prototype. Um, so that's been quite a learning experience to, to notice that, oh, some of those moments come from anywhere, you know, just like in anything when you're innovating. They come from anywhere. And then there's learning about the audience, about my prospective audience. What do they want? What do they not want? What do they think they want? And then they actually don't know about it until they see a glimpse of it. Um, and then learning about fundraising. So I decided um, after a few months, like, ooh, I'm gonna take a pause on fundraising, focus on the product and the people, the product and the people, meaning the audience. And uh, here we are. Yeah. A lot of learning, definitely a lot of learning. I mean, you know, me and you were just kind of chopping it up a little bit before we uh, started recording and we're talking about that, you know, and it, look, it's um, no matter who you are, no matter what level of startup you are at, whatever people maybe perceive you to be as a founder, um, it's always learning and it's tough. You know, I think there's just like, this is a road that, um, you know, and I don't want to sit here and just be that person that's like, oh, startups are so hard you know, <laughs> it is life you know life life is challenging and hard and and when we're doing something extraordinary when we're doing something that no one or people haven't done before of course it's going to be difficult mm -hmm. so you know getting through that and you mentioned some interesting stuff around being healthy so i uh, love that too and, and really just making sure that we're all in in the right place in the right place for that. Um, so thank you for sharing all that. Um, I want to take a little more step back, and um, you know, as you um, you've now pitched a few Founders Live events, 
and um, really interested on your advice around pitching. Um, mm. Your pitches have been entertaining. They've, they've really been uh, something that you've packed a lot of meat into. Um, how did you go about preparing for the pitches and what advice would you give earlier stage entrepreneurs that are thinking about pitching at Founders Live? Okay, pitching at Founders Live. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> I think that's a good distinction because um, I think at this point, everyone should know that pitching at Founders Live means 99 seconds and that's not a lot of time. So a lot of it is, I'll say the simple thing, which is a lot of it is saying no, no to a bunch of stuff. So like a lot is, a lot of ideas surface and or a lot of things that you want to show surface, maybe the actual product, customer, testimonials and things like that, um, like summaries of your team. But you're going to have to say no to a lot of it. And instead, well, the big question is, what should you focus on? And so before we enter into answering that question, I think the the theme or the motivation of what helped me, at least, is the following assumptions. One is assume no one cares. Assume no one cares. Maybe your mom cares. You know, maybe your siblings care. Um, your wife cares or your husband cares. But even if they care, assume they don't care. Assume no one cares. And so the next step is, well, what do I want them to feel? So that's like a, a good question to ask. What do I want them to feel? And you only got a few seconds, really. It's really between 10, 15 seconds just to hook them in. And then there's the what do I want to show? Kind of like a what what maybe it's the, a bit of the solution or a bit of the product. And then shortly thereafter, what do I want them to feel about that thing that I showed? So it's a lot of it is about, yeah, what are them, what do I want them to feel in the beginning? What's important? Assume they don't care. Assume you only have a few seconds and then show the thing, you know, your solution. But then shortly after that, make sure it's it's uh, it's holding on to some kind of emotion you want them to leave with. I love that. You, yeah, you just hit on a number of different aspects of a pitch. And really, in the end, it's you want people to walk away from the experience, whether it's in person or virtual. You want them to say they need just remembering that pitch. It's memorable. It's curiosity of I want to learn more. That person was engaging this this company. This concept is something of intrigue. I'm very like I'm interested. I need that. They just mm -hmm. touched on a problem that I have. Right. So when you mm -hmm. come from it from all those angles, again, 99 seconds, but you can pack a lot in 99 seconds. So mm -hmm. um, you really you really uh, you just incorporated that really well. So I thank you for that. Um, you know uh, what? Let's let's go a little further now into um, let's talk about Zestify and let's talk about um, let's go back to that problem. Like, let's go back to yeah. that, that big thing that you see still in the world that you really, really want to fix. Yeah, sure. So I'll take it a little personally. So many years ago, I was in a grocery store. I was poor. It was a discount store. And I really wished I had like a financial angel on my shoulder telling me, yeah, that, that's okay for you to buy. Um, it's not going to hurt you. Or later on, I really, again, I really wish I had that financial angel on me that said, uh, yeah, you should probably not buy that car. That's, that's a little too much. It's going to go into your emergency savings, which you're still trying to grow. And um, nope, don't do it. I really wish I had that because the fact is I did not. And then it hurt me <laughs> later. So I thought, OK, that's definitely not my own experience. I bet a lot of people are experiencing this. And ultimately, a lot of us struggle to afford everything we want in life. And here, it's the everything that's important. So it could be from experiences like vacations, especially during this pandemic, we want to get away, we want to live a little, um, and making sure that we can afford it. And not when we say afford, not just afford it right now, like, yeah, I have cash in the account, I can definitely pay for uh, whatever, whatever, like a $1,000 vacation or something. But then it's also making sure that it's not hurting you financially in the immediate and in the long term. So it's building this smart shopping experience that helps you make sure you're being financially wise now and later. It's kind of like the having financial, like having that financial angel on the shoulder. Mm. And, you know, the 
it's so needed. You're absolutely right. You know, and I think at, I've thought about this a lot too, where look, it's not just inflation that seems to be creeping up now, but when you look at like just how expensive it is to live today compared to mm -hmm. like, you know, a generation ago, um, yeah. when you look at the cost of technology and, you know, mobile, um, you know, broadband internet, you know, the, the, the things that are purchased and the things that we, uh, utilize in, in our life. And so financial, financial intelligence and using technology to help us live a better life in our financial and then just kind of colliding that with wellness. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think you, those words. So, um, you know, the financial aspect, uh, allowing, helping people live a better life that can flow into being just more, just wellness in general and health yes. and wellness. So talk a little bit more about how the words or the financial aspect comes along into along with wellness. Ooh, thanks. Yeah. So ultimately this Zestify is a financial wellness startup and I chose those words carefully because it's, it's in the name as well as in the logo. It's a Lotus shield and a Lotus perseveres through the murkiest waters, you know, even in hard times. So it's not just the mission of Zestify is to guide everyone to explore and reach their dreams. But really, there's a lot of aspects in life where you didn't choose to lose your job. You didn't choose to get fired. You didn't choose to have your family member get sick. And now you're helping take care of them. You didn't choose uh, you know, a loved one to lose a job. And now you're helping them. You might not have chosen any of those. But for those who are wise and who are lived and seasoned and usually older, they usually are able to find ways to persevere through those times. And at the very least, Zestify wants to be able to help out, to be that hub of resources to help you connect to resources that'll help you through those hard times financially. Um, so there, there's the, uh, you know, there's an aspirational aspect to Zestify, which is, you know, explore and reach your dreams. But then there's also the, wait a minute, persevere through the hard times. And it's within that aspect that it, that really that wellness theme bubbles up. The other reason is um, that I think about wellness as being an appropriate word for this tech powered startup is that Zestify wants to be there when you're interested in whatever it is you want to spend on. We'd rather be there instead of just being this thing in the background. Oh yeah, when you care about your money. No, we want to be there when you want to shop for a vacation. We want to be there where you are when you're interested in buying a car or a house. So we want to make sure that you are well um, on your way to enriching your life in the moment that you care. Yeah. And how, how does that manifest, uh, especially when you want to take in consideration uh, security and even, you know, privacy? Um, we're talking about financial data and information. Um, we're in a weird, interesting place where it really does seem like the future is becoming, and if not here with things like the metaverse being talked about. So, you know, where do you, how do you see the, your application being there at the same time respecting people's privacy and security? Yeah. Ooh, that's an interesting question. So I have a bit of a bit of an experience in building um, data privacy and policies uh, that are CCPA and GDPR compliant and Zestify wants to be global. So GDPR is very important. Um, I think of this in the spirit of what Google is doing which is they have been entering a phase in which they want to do, they, they want to gain more, they want to do less. No, I'm sorry, they want to do more with less. Yeah. Meaning like the automated, um, I, I think the automated feature or the automated option is to have your data deleted. So in, in Zestify's case, um, we give our customers, we will be giving our customers two options. You can link your basic financial accounts through uh, partners that securely link your accounts. Like there's bread and butter companies that do that. That is their focus. And so Zestify would be partnering with those companies. However, there are 
uh, segment of our customers, potential customers that already plan, do their planning and stuff in spreadsheets. And so they don't want to connect their accounts at all in any app. And they, or, or if, even if they do, it's like one app here and there, and it's only their like checking and savings account, none of their other accounts. So we want to offer that ability to smoothly and easily enter some of their basic financials, nothing crazy. And then so that they could use Zestify and benefit from there. Mm, yeah. Control sounds like, you know, providing yeah. as much control as possible. And, um, you know, I think, I think we are seeing a pendulum swing back in some ways from all this data collection, all this, you know, uh, companies doing things that we as consumers not even aware of, or, mm -hmm. or you know, it might be in that 30 page, <laughs> check the box and, you know, the terms and conditions that no one reads. So it, these are things that look as you as a product and experience creator, mm -hmm. just as we are as well, just as I am with what Founders Live is growing around the world. We have the ability. You're early in the in the road here. You're early in the journey. Make the make the best decisions you can now to then set up the road for, you know, treating your customers and treating your users as mostly respected and mostly secure as possible. And, you know, I think another way to say this is, um, you know, like when you look at companies like Facebook and Google, mm -hmm. they made decisions early on in their, in their journey that are even now, I mean, it might be financially the best decision for like revenue, but it's not for the users. And so we have an opportunity to make those decisions now, better decisions yes. and understanding that the respect of the user and the end, the end customer is mm -hmm. higher, is such more important and higher priority than maximizing profit. Yeah, indeed. And yeah, I'm so, I, I didn't, I didn't know you'd take it there, Nick. And that's interesting because I, I deeply, and I don't talk about it much is I think about responsible innovation. And ultimately when I decided, okay, okay, I'm going to go all in and do this and build this experience, which is the appropriate word, the service, this experience, I wanted to do it responsibly, responsibly and responsible innovation is the key word there. And definitely some companies out there doing that. And uh, I want to do it by design in the early stages. And I want to make sure that it's not just responsible innovation in the product and the service, but also in the culture. And so once I start building out the team, I want to make sure there's this ethos, this credo of what that means um, to be innovating responsibly. Yeah, it's it's and it's a tough consideration in the sense that you know you as as the founder and the product experience creator, you have to think about a lot of the scenarios, right? And you have mm -hmm. to consider a uh, tremendous amount of kind of edge cases or angles to to in an ideal world create the best user experience possible that is responsible. You know, it's um, you know, when you go back to a founder's life core value, it's the respectful authenticity, you know, mm -hmm. respectful yeah. is there. Right. And so we make that clear that that is what our core value means is we're taking the end customer and the end user in consideration every time that we are creating that experience, whether it's technology in the app or mm -hmm. experience in person at an event. And yeah, I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's probably a lot easier to just to like maximize, okay, whatever makes us the most money. <laughs> but that's, yeah. not, that's not what responsible innovation is all about. And that's not what the world that we want to live in, right? No, yeah, for the most part, yeah. And de definitely personally for me, uh, yeah. I, I, and I don't want this thing that I'm building um, to emulate that at all. I think one thing I should say about responsible innovation is that... Um, like to make it tactical as one example, you know, I, I, I do talk to some bank banks sometimes and some financial institutions where one big question they have is, oh, since you would be partnering with a bank, um, then what kind of data sharing or the assumption is there would be rich data sharing capabilities. And from there, that could be a revenue stream. OK, now that sounds attractive, right? Financially, it sounds attractive as a business. But then again, is it really, is it responsible innovation? Uh, is that responsible of me to do that? And 
The short answer is I think there's a way in which you ultimately can share high level data, not personal data that would be in any way invasive to someone's privacy. So there's like little examples like that where, yeah, whoa, I, you know, the revenue potential is quite high, but then no, no, the right thing to do and really to attract the right kind of customers for that match this service um, in the long term would be better if you do it responsibly. Mm, yeah. Let's shift to a bit of advice for other startup founders and even keeping this thread of uh, making difficult decisions uh, for leader. This is literally decisions that might become more important in three to five years, but you're already making them now. Um, what advice would you have for early stage entrepreneurs that are just getting started, they're building out, um, you know, they're getting going and they have to come to crossroads and make significant decisions about the model that they're going to utilize for even revenue to, you know, GDPR, you know, respect for the data. Um, what sort of advice would you have for entrepreneurs to consider these sort of decisions? Man, that's an interesting question because I feel like I, I'm, I'm definitely not in the place to give advice to other founders since I'm so early stage anyway, but I will answer the question. Um, besides, besides referring back to the first question you asked me, I think about um, advice on pitching at Founders Live. So there's definitely elements of pitching on Founders Live that you could apply elsewhere. Um, so that, that's, that's very important. And of course, pitching to investors is different from pitching to a general audience. So be mindful of that. And then I think in the earliest stages, I think I'll refer to, I think it was, uh, Mark Laurie. So who's now doing city of the future. Um, I think he was the one that referred to how you can test out your idea. Like it doesn't take much. It, and it doesn't matter if it's hardware or software that ultimately, yeah. and now these are my words, you could even, you know, take a piece of paper, write down the idea. And if you're in college, just slap that on everyone's door while, well, well, pre COVID, or, I mean, in, even the digital world, you could do this just to see and ask decent questions, not too long. And you could get a sense for, does this thing have merit? Does this thing have any kind of potential value? Even if there's any reaction, even if the reaction is, no, that's totally bogus. It's not going to work. That's usually interesting because that means you might actually be onto something. If they say anything like that's not going to work. Oh, that'd be really cool. Oh, that'd be awesome. But it would never happen. That is telling. That's not a no. That's a, the, the door is there. The door is there. It just needs to be open. No one wants to open the door. Maybe you should open the door. So surveying, you know, surveys, test out the idea, building any kind of model. Uh, any kind, it doesn't matter if it, even if it's hardware, like uh, if you're trying to build, um, I don't know, like a super cool stand-up desk that has every gizmo in it, you know, with, um, I don't know, a bunch of speakers everywhere or something. Even if it weren't, even if it did not functionally work, like it's good to just test out, build that model and have people face it, touch it, feel it, experience it if it's software. Um, yeah, gain feedback and refine along the way. I love that. Yeah. Get, you know, just figuring out unique ways to get feedback and, you know, interacting with your potential customers, your target market, what is their responses? Um, it's going to give you a lot of insight and, you know, doing that on cost effectively, if not free, there's a lot of ways to do that today and you're going to learn a lot and then figure out what those next steps are. So, Great stuff. Um, Asan, I want to thank you for joining me in this conversation today. Uh, just kind of a quick one, but we wanted to jump in, get a little more about you and your story and let everyone know that you are one of the finalists for the Founders Life Fest 2021 on December 1st. So if you're watching and you know you can come into uh, Live Fest, join us hear Asan's pitch and uh, support everyone uh, being a part of the Founders Live event and being a part of the community. So Asan, uh, last few words here for you. Oh man, this has been a nice wild ride. This is fun and interesting and exciting. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, I think I'll make the pitch interesting for Live Fest. And uh, hey, if you wanna see it, you know where to go.
got to check it out. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, so everyone, hey, this is, um, you know, Founders Live Conversations. We jump into great, inspiring conversations with entrepreneurs from all over the world. Uh, keep listening, keep watching us, and uh, please join us on December 1st. So with that, thank you all. Have a good day.